Hey, what's up guys? Unfortunately, my uh, new high-def camera didn't show up today. Uh, they're going to deliver it on Monday. Uh, oh, believe me, I was upset. It was supposed to be delivered today at 6 a.m. It was scanned as out for delivery, and then the tracking status was on vehicle for delivery today. So all day I waited for it to show up. I actually didn't go out because I've missed shipments before and it's real pain in the ass if you have to go pick it up and you don't have the proper ID that they want. So I was like, I'm not going to miss it. I rarely do miss shipments, but uh, just in case, I didn't go out. Then at about 8 o'clock, so 14 hours later almost, the status changed to exception. And then it turns out that a, the driver scanned the package and then forgot to load it onto his truck. Drove around all day with the package sitting in the bay. I guess no one happened to notice that it was sitting there and it was supposed to go out. Uh, and then they're going to deliver it the next business day, which is Monday. So now I have to wait three more days. Anyway, I don't want to waste too much time freaking out, but I was not a happy customer. This is my uh, Fluke slash Phillips PM2525 multimeter. Apparently this was built right around the time when they were transitioning from Fluke to Philips, or from Philips to Fluke, sorry. So there's a bunch of these that are branded Philips and a bunch of these that are branded Fluke. They're identical except for, um, of course, the branding on it. Yeah, really, uh, this is going to be the first time I've ever torn down something like this. I've done a lot of teardowns before, but uh, this is going to be the first like this. Anyway, so I have my trusty my trusty screwdriver set. Um, I do have my uh, I have all my other tools at the ready. Keep that bit out. So it looks like our first bit here is uh, Torx in the bottom. I'm just gonna see what size of Torx. Oh, I can just fit in there. Oh, there we go. I think that's it. I think that just this all should just come off. Well, that was easy. This is this giant, just like in your handheld multimeters, there's a big wheel that turns um, to choose whatever you're uh, selecting. So that looks like the motor drive there, and then this is the connection to the big turner. Now on mine, while I have this open, I might actually lubricate this, because mine, it really clunks along. <laughs> like, this is Oh, just this awful noise as it turns. So I have a feeling that that's either getting worn or uh, there's some other problem. Um, top. Um, I'm pretty sure that's, yeah, this is just power supply. Good to see that they're mostly jelly bean parts. I actually have a lot of these chips lying around. Uh, there's just some uh, LM. There's a 393, another 393, so three 393s, and then uh can't see that other one very well. Uh, anyway, they're just little op amps, I think, and voltage regulators, etc. So good to see the power supply is very simple. It's all very uh, easily user serviceable. Uh, back here, this is the GPIB board, I'm assuming. Because uh, this does have GPIB, also known as IEEE 488. That looks like, yes, that is what that is. It's got a shielded can on there. We'll take a better look at that in a minute. Okay, so here we are at the main board, finally. Um, I'm actually going to turn on the front light on the camera. Just so we can see a little better. So right there we have an Intel uh, 8031. Um, some... Uh, 
7.4HC 373s. Uh, there's a windowed EEPROM. And I actually have something I actually know for a fact that I can read that exact uh, what, that exact EPROM because I have another one that I've read a CDM 6116 AES not sure what that is um, I feel like I should know and then here's that mechanism I was showing you before now there's the drive motor and then there's underneath this will be all the connectors I don't really want to open that up I do kind of want to lubricate it if I can um, as you can see, it's all it's a very simple design. Um, early digital design. Well, not early, but uh, I think for the time, this was uh, quite an expensive multimeter when it was released. So, uh, you know, very simple, but very interesting to look at. Okay, so I took that uh, APROM out of there. And we're going to try and read what's on it and see if there's anything interesting in the, in there so it's in my little mini pro now for those of you that haven't seen Dave's um, review on this or there's other reviews online as well this is a little universal uh, programmer that can do a lot of parts you can pick one up on eBay for usually between 40 and 50 bucks for just the unit itself there's two versions um, it's called the TL866 now there's the CS version which is what I bought and the A version the difference being that the CS version can only do um, the uh, ZIF socket like that where you plug it in whereas the A version can also do in circuit programming uh, there's actually a hack in the thread um, the review thread on the EEV blog forum on how to hack it from a CS to an A, which I've done. You need um, a PIC programmer separate from this programmer, uh, like um, a PIC kit or something similar to do it, but uh, once you do it, it works like a charm. Anyway, so we're just going to uh, quickly... Now what was the... It's the AM27256D. So if we take the 27256, uh, I remember that works fine. And now we're just gonna read everything out. Bam! So over at the right hand side here is the ASCII representation of all the data that was just read out. So I'm just gonna take a quick scroll through here. It's got a lot of functions, here we go. Yeah, so there's all the uh, Strings, min, max, out, zero, cal, closed, open, 99999E plus 09. Um, some of these might be test strings for when the thing first turns on. Fail, error, open, closed, cal. Yeah, I thought we'd see a couple interesting things in here. When we get to the very bottom, too, we might see... Um, sometimes programmers would throw in little, nope, wow, it basically fills up almost the whole thing. I mean, we're talking, there's just a couple, I mean, uh, a couple bytes free, really. I mean, maybe a hundred bytes. No, not even, let me think, one, two, three, uh, yeah, about 50 bytes free at the very end here. Okay, so I've got the EPROM back in there. Um, now... I didn't notice this device over here. Um, I actually happen to have that exact same part, <laughs> just as a spare. Now it's interesting, the this, this, the processor, that are all socketed, which is kind of um, unusual. I mean, it's usual to have the ROM socketed and sometimes the processor, but I can't even remember what this is and it's socketed and so is that. Now. It's possible that the person who sent this to me did some repairs on it and uh, put those sockets in just in case. Um, but it's hard to say. And uh, yeah, I just thought that was an interesting little note. There's, uh, looks like... Interesting. I've never quite seen packages like that. It almost looks like... God, that's so weird. It looks like some sort of leaded device going through an inductor or a coil. 
I suppose that could be for signal integrity or um, as some sort of step up or step down transformer maybe um, but really it's hard to say it could even just be a piece of ferrite around it but it really does look like an inductor to me um, some of them have caps it looks like in parallel with them um, there's a, it looks like there's, this is going to be one the big current shunt resistor, I would imagine. So most of this is the front end, um, all around here, and over here as well. This is probably most of the front end. So here's the front panel interface, um, no real surprises, very simple button and LCD. There is one chip in there, um... No idea what that is. Um, it's probably a quite simple PCF8574. Maybe I'll look that up afterwards. Uh, it looks like a contrast um, pot. Uh, and then that red, that's the connection interface, which actually is connected from the back through the PCB. So that's a little unusual, but uh, nothing too surprising, really. Very simple. It looks like a kind of a weird interface, lots of pins, so that probably wouldn't be a very reusable thing if you were ever salvaging one of these that screen probably wouldn't be very reusable. Anyway, I'm going to pop that back in. Uh, so the interface that I want to hack into is this plug right here. Uh, it's a proprietary 8-pin uh, DIN interface. Um, I mean, that's a common connector, but uh, it's a weird plug to use. It's used for temperature measurement and for four-wire resistance. Um, so I'm going to try... I mean, I think I have a pinout for it. Um, I'm going to try and hack into it uh, while I have this open uh, and see if I can get something connected um, figure out what all the pins are, make sure they line up with the pin out that I have um, and then yeah go from there. Now we'll take a quick look in here uh, that shielded can, oh actually that'll be easy to take off, I'm just gonna pop that off so here's a quick look at this board um, this is the uh, general purpose interface bus or GPIB uh, originally known as the Hewlett Packard interface bus. Um, as far as I know, it's actually quite a simple bus. Um, there's just a whole bunch of 7400 series logic and then one bigger chip there. DHD8801. Um, I'm not sure if that's a small processor. The pin count suggests it's some, doing some sort of something. <laughs> I don't recognize that part number. Um, the rest are just very simple, like 7402, 7405, um, 40245, I recognize that one. Um, 75160, that's an interesting one. And 75161. Interesting, 75 is not a prefix you see often. I can't remember if that's a temperature difference. I know that 5.4 is military spec, um, and then we have the back of the uh, interface plug there, and then the rest of that is all just power connections. I'm assuming that's the fuse, and uh, yeah, that's just the fuse connection. So I'm probing uh, one of those pins, and uh, yep, looks like we either have clock or data. I'm sort of guessing this looks more like data. It just looks like a repeating pattern. It's probably some sort of query. Yeah, alright. So, we're getting data on that. What's the only other unused pins are this one. Ah, yes. That also looks like I2C data or clock. That could easily be the data, actually. And then there's one more. Let's see. It's this one, which has got nothing on it. And then... Alright, so my finished hack. Uh, it's a little bit quick and dirty, but it uh, does the trick. Um, I basically added a uh, solder cup uh, connector in there, and then just soldered wires to the uh, connectors that I needed. Uh, so at this point, it looks kind of ugly. But once I attach, um, hopefully I'm going to attach either um, banana jacks, like those ones, that are, they'll just sort of hang there, but they won't be that ugly. I'll try and cut the wires a bit shorter. Or just permanent probes, but probably banana jacks, because as you can see in the uh, 
pinouts. I mean, they're identical for um, for wire measurement and for PT100 thermistor. Uh, they use the exact same pins, um, just slightly different setups. So the ones that are unconnected, specifically five and six, that's the I2C bus. And that's for doing um, calibration, which is kind of interesting. And so I've also soldered onto those because I'm going to try and hack into those uh, into that bus and see what happens. Anyway, so that's my first teardown um, of my Philips PM2525 multimeter. Um, there's a link in the description for the service manual. Uh, I can't remember if it's the user manual or the service manual. I think actually it's just the user manual. I've looked, uh, actually I think I might also have the service manual. If I have the service manual as well, I'll link that in. Um, I definitely have, yeah, I think I do because I do have schematics for some of the boards somewhere. I believe it's that one. It's either that or the, the power supply below it. They're both in the same series and built around the same time. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I've edited it together as best I can so that it's not too annoying. I don't talk for too long. There's no stupid awkward shots. I mean, uh, there's probably a couple awkward shots still in the edit. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks a lot. And uh, comment and subscribe. That would be awesome. I'm going to have more cool teardowns in the future. I'm going to have some interviews with uh, quite well-known engineers uh, in the near future. I'm just scheduling those um, ongoing right now. And uh, yeah, there should be some cool stuff. So my channel should start to become cool. Talk to you guys soon.
Ecke 